Hello, everybody. Welcome back once again. It's the Brawl for All Pro Wrestling Show, episode 24 here. And today we've got kind of a special guest, I would say. C-Dub from the Chronicord Pro Wrestling Show. Is that what you want to call it, C-Dub? What's up, man? What's going on, Jeff? Absolutely. Chronicord Pro Wrestling. We are also here on YouTube. There will be a link in the description there. You guys can come check us out. Right. We do a lot of similar stuff to what uh, Brawl for All does here. Okay, cool. Can you just kind of maybe tell everybody how we met? Like, you just found us on the YouTube there. That's, I think, what I told them last week, so. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, I was, of course, uh, we're just getting our start as far as our YouTube content is concerned. We've got a lot of good stuff out there. Yeah. But uh, as a pro wrestling fan, I was going out and looking for other fans who were doing the same thing that I'm doing, and I happened upon you guys and i liked what i heard and here we are well i'm glad you liked what you heard i just kind of wanted you to get that out there for the fans that are listening of how we met too so. absolutely uh we're gonna go at extreme rules tonight uh go over raw like we always do the uh aftermath on raw and then uh we got some news and notes to go over quite a bit really so hopefully we can get this within an hour i don't know what do you think c-dub we might have to go a little Broadway. Daddy. Hey, it doesn't matter because who knows when you ever be back. So, uh, hey. actually, Stephen, Jeff, and Jason all busy tonight. We're unable to get on. Uh, I was gonna try to get one more guy on here that's usually on here, but I think me and C Dub can handle it for this week. So, episode twenty-four. It's a special Broadway episode. Yes, sir. I'll have to uh, catch uh, the rest of the brawl for oh, all yeah. from, and, uh, from you, the next round. Right, and uh, you might want to shout out where you're from, too. Yeah, I am uh, I hail from Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. Uh, cool. And I'm also, my second home is in the Tampa Bay area in Florida. I kind of go back and forth between the two. Yeah. But uh, Tennessee is my, my headquarters. Yeah, because as everybody knows, everybody on the show right now is from Illinois, uh, all around the same area. So uh, yep. glad to have an opinion from somebody from the Tennessee area because that's a rich wrestling history there. Most uh, certainly, man. Got, I can uh, go you on got for Lawler's territory. Yep, you got Lawler. Jarrett's. You got, uh, of course, Smoky Mountain. You got the Jarretts. I mean, uh, you had Macho Man's territory around that area, right? That's right. Poffo, ICW Poffo, ran around was here. Poffo, Southern Illinois. Yeah, actually, uh, he ran uh, Downers uh, Grove. Uh, Downer, yep, Downers Grove. He ran Kentucky as well as into the nor uh, northern part. So of that's kind of cool that you know we're kind of connected through that territory on Illinois and through the Macho Man Poffo territory. Kind of went from uh, Illinois through Nashville, Tennessee. They did, or not? Na definitely. Was it Nashville or just Tennessee? I believe Memphis. the Poffos did run Nashville. I okay. mean, from what I know, the Poffos. Because uh, you had uh, you had Law. Sorry to cut you off, but you had Lawler in Memphis. Correct. And then you had the Jarrett's were running around Memphis too, right? Uh, the Jarrett's ran Nashville more than Memphis. So uh, how did Macho Poffos get in there? Because they, they had kind of a – they were like the stars of their company. Well, yeah, basically uh, Angelo, uh, Randy and Lanny's father, was the promoter, of course a wrestler, and he ran what was essentially an outlaw federation at the time, which right. – Meant, which which meant more than anything that they weren't aligned with the NWA. Right. And they didn't really abide by the rules at the time where you didn't step on another territory's toes. They didn't give a shit. They just went right in. Right on. So they just kind of, yeah, because I remember hearing like Lawler and J they didn't really get along with the Poffo territory at first. Absolutely not. And then they finally ended up working together, I remember, so. That's right. Uh, I think I've seen the match on YouTube of Macho Man taking on Lawler. Yeah, those guys had some pretty good stuff in the late 70s, early 80s there. Right. And people don't even know that part of his career, really, when Macho Man wasn't in the WWF. No. So that's kind of cool, though, that the, you know, they're from Downers Grove, Illinois, and they go down into they have a name in Tennessee, too. So Absolutely. So if you want to kick off, uh, you watched Extreme Rules then, I'm guessing. Yes, sir. Watched it live. Uh, what'd you think overall of the whole show? Overall, I was pleased. Honestly, the build-up to it was about as weak as it gets. It which, really was. Which, that's something I kind of expect. That's usually the post-WrestleMania hangover. They they sort of withdraw, and then they kind of pick up steam about midsummer, building into SummerSlam. Do you have any it, views on the PG? Well, uh, there's no denying that WWE is certainly more geared towards kids than it ever has been. 
But to me, if they really want to do the biggest business that they can, they need to appeal to everyone. Yeah, because you, you've probably heard Steven on here. He, he really hates the PG, and he really can't hardly even watch anymore. So I just wanted to get your opinion on what you thought of that. I would say that they've got a lot better with it recently. I mean, there were some times there from like 2009 through about 2012 where Raw was pretty un, or just unbearable to watch. It really was. But here I am, the loyal wrestling fan. Of course, I'm going to stick with it. Yeah, that's and what I, I tell them. I feel like now that they've kind of got to a product that really is starting to appeal to everyone, you got NXT, which of course appeals to the the work rate, the internet wrestling fan type, the typical wrestling nerd like myself. Right. Me and then too. you have the more mainstream uh, variety show in Monday Night Raw. Uh, and I uh, think... overall... Go ahead. Uh, overall, I would say that they, if what we have now is an indication of what the Triple H, Stephanie McMahon reign is going to be after Vince McMahon is gone, then I think we as wrestling fans are in good shape. Yeah, but don't you hate them on TV? Oh, well, absolutely. Okay, so I, I would, I could do without them on TV. Yeah, yeah. I if mean, if they just to, stick behind the scenes, that'd be fine with me. To me, I mean, I was a guy who grew up on Jack Tunney being the authority figure. Right, that was a lot better. The thing was with that, I mean, if you see the authority figure every week and they're your main heel, number one, it's hard to get heat off of that. Number two, them showing up is going to mean nothing. Whereas, as we both know now, if Vince McMahon shows up on Raw, it's a pretty big deal. Right. But, uh, yeah, I, I could definitely go without the authority figure storyline of any kind. Just give it a rest. That's what I've been saying. Because, I mean, they did it with McMahon already, and it just seems like that's what they're trying to do again is make it the Corporation 2.0, I've always said. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it's definitely reminiscent of the uh, McMahon-Helmsley era from, uh, like, 2000, 2001-ish. Yeah, it really is. Man, they're almost feeding right off of that McMahon-Helmsley deal, so I've never really thought of that. Yeah, a little Jeez. bit of foreshadowing. So we've already had it. Like This is this is version two or three. Well, or what, I, I, I thought whenever they first finished off, they should have just kept it off and never brought it back in the first place, but that's just my opinion, and we have what we have. So Absolutely. Okay, so getting back into the pay-per-view since we got off point there, but... I just wanted to see what you had your your thoughts on PG because I, I do love NXT and everything, but man, lately it's just like they need some brutality. I think towards the product a little bit because they're missing that kind. They're missing that point in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. That, I mean, a little bit of blood would help. You know, it, in, in certain situations, like in that Brock match at Mania, it really helped. Yeah. So that shows you right there that it could help. Once in a while, it's good to add that extra little element of realism. and uh, Maybe a chair shot here and there, maybe. I don't know. I, I really don't want to see guys getting concussions from chair shots, but every now and then, couldn't they do one? I feel like they could do it and cover up correctly yeah, to the head rather than always to the back. And they don't have the... to swing like a full-out shot. I mean, No, no. I just and hate the... constantly getting chair shots to the back. And, the, the, I mean, the worst is like the little jab with the top of the chair to the gut. Yeah. I mean, come on. But man. just keep hitting him in the back, hitting him in the back. It just gets stupid. Like, you would never just sit there and hit the guy in the right in the back. Nope. So. Okay, so we had the kickoff show, and they announced that Neville will take the place of Daniel Bryan. And uh, Daniel Bryan was medically unable to compete. And as far as I'm concerned, I think he's out for a while now. I think they said over a month he's going to be out, as far yeah. as I know. So, what's your thoughts on Brian being out? That I kind of need to get the belt off. I thought last night would have been a b- perfect opportunity for them to just strip the title then and have a match. I did as well. I, uh, you could almost have just thrown the Intercontinental title as being the prize for, of course, tonight is Tuesday, we're recording this. Why, right. For the, the King of the Ring tournament. That you could tonight. have. You could have. I don't know what they're keeping the title on Brian for. Well, hopefully that the, that's an indication that whatever this issue is, it's something that we're not certain of what it's going to be or it's not that serious. To me, man, I mean, whenever you look at everybody on the WWE roster, there's some people that are easy to cheer for as characters, and there's other people that are easy to cheer for as human beings. Right. And Daniel Bryan's one of those guys that I genuinely want to see do well in life, no matter what he's doing. Right. Uh, it goes without saying that he's had a, a excellent career, uh, even before he ever made it to do, to uh, WWE. Yeah. 
I always liked uh, Brian Danielson. The, I did too. The, the American uh, Dragon. I used to read absolutely. him about him in the Pro Wrestling Illustrated and everything like that back in like 02, yeah, 03. Man. And I was really yeah. high on the guy back then on coming into WWE. My only problem was his size and still is. I just think he's kind of unbelievable with the size wise. He is, uh, definitely. You got a guy like... like Neville who's undersized, but man, his girth makes up for it. He's big, you know. He's yeah, almost Neville's... like a Benoit type, I'd say. Absolutely, I would agree. He's very reminiscent of the Dynamite Kid to me. Yes, yes. So he's almost like a, a coming from the same cloth as those guys, which they were a little bit bigger. Yeah. In the stature was short, but you know Brian, he, he's stature short and he's not even that big. It just makes him look even smaller. Like when he fought Kane last year, I was like, gosh. Yeah. How can this yeah, guy be can... heavyweight champion? That's true, but so uh, also I, I don't I mean, ever it's... see him getting back in that heavyweight title contention again. I. I would say not anytime soon. Uh, to be honest, I would be surprised if we see Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan, finish out 2015 Dude, as an active competitor yeah, in the I, WWE. I think it may be the end of the road for him if he's out again with another surgery. And to be honest, as I was kind of getting at earlier about him being a really likable, genuine human being, right? I would rather see the guy go be a success as a husband and a father and whatever he chooses to do and not have to live with the deterioration or qual of his quality of life. Yeah, it's really bringing his quality of life down already, in my opinion. Like I've said since the get-go from his return at the Rumble that he has not looked right, and no. that was the reason that WWE has not been using him like everybody was thinking they were going to use him. I mean, everybody wanted him to win the Rumble, but it was physically unable to win the Rumble. Definitely. I mean, it's 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 hard for them to put all their chips in on somebody whenever they're not sure that he's going to be able to go six So do you later. feel like he was rushed back? I don't think he was necessarily rushed back. I, I, I kind of do. They wanted to get him into Mania, so they had to throw him into that Rumble and get him back in the Mania mix by Mania. I think he was kind of rushed back. Maybe they should have waited a little bit and not even had him come back at Rumble or, the, or Mania and waited till afterwards. I mean, he would have been perfect for the night after uh, WrestleMania for the big return, right? Right, and it would have gave him more time to heal up and see if he could go. That's true. Even if uh, they put him on TV before then, they didn't have to put him in Mania as the Intercontinental Champion. No, absolutely not. I mean, he could come out and do any number of things you know, or not appear at all. Okay. But I feel like that they kind of brought him back because... If he wasn't at WrestleMania 31 after having that huge WrestleMania 30, it would really be a kind of a down point on his career. Right. And perhaps that was some of the motivation behind it. Right. So, um, getting on to the match, because I think we talked enough about Brian, and I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, and I guess we'll keep people posted on what happens with him. So, I don't know. It just depends on if he's going to be out. But if he is out, I can see him not returning and being gone for good, like you said. Yeah. So it, it'll be interesting. It, I do see an intercontinental vacate vacancy coming too. So for sure, um, that could happen by next draw if they know. Um, yeah. Bad news, Barrett Neville. I thought it was a good kickoff show match. Um, it was. I kind of liked that this match got moved to the kickoff show, so they put the uh, tag team match on the main card. I really did because I kept saying here for I don't know the last few pay per views. Why do they always have the tag matches the kickoff show? Yeah, and obviously we'll get into it here shortly, but I feel like the tag team match tonight was... Oh, it was great. It was great, and I feel like that the... And, and that's not a slight against Barrett or Neville. Right. Because, the, as you said, that was a fantastic opener. The crowd is super into Neville. The uh, problem I had with it was the commercial break right in the middle of the match. Uh, I didn't that, understand that at all. Uh, I'm yeah. just saying right now they need to quit doing that. Yeah, I, I don't know why they do that. And they do it on TV, too. And every time you do that, it breaks up the momentum of a match that you have going. And it kind of just, ah. Uh. It, it does. And that was the only thing I had problem with that. But everything else was cool. Neville was perfect spot on almost the oh, entire yeah. match. I think Barrett was a bad matchup for him. Because Barrett's know, not really that kind of a wrestler. And I think some of the moves were awkward for Barrett that he tried to pull off. And that's what's going to run into trouble for Neville is that some of these guys aren't going to be able to work his style. That's right. You know, uh, I would say that I kind of like this uh, this matchup a little bit. Uh, it was definitely awkward for Barrett. You could tell uh, a lot of this match was Neville working around Barrett. Yeah, it was. 
but I feel like the psychology between these two in the match, these guys had excellent hope spots, cutoffs, false finishes. Right. Uh, and the finish of the match was awesome. Uh, the, Neville, of course, beat Bad News Barrett with the red arrow. Right. I didn't even mention that. So. And uh, wishful thinking on my part, in my notes here, I had that I really look forward to more from these two blokes from the U.K., yeah, they are, and, and that's another thing I was thinking. These guys are both from uh, England, so I was yeah. thinking uh, Bad News Barrett probably didn't have any problem putting Neville over. Probably friends from the past. I would say so, and uh, I believe he uh, had the favor returned. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about that. I was going to say he returned the favor later, so we'll talk about most, that. Most definitely. Um, but anything else other than that, I just think that was a pretty good opening match. Could he Could have went without the uh, break in the show. I don't know why they do those commercial breaks in the middle of the match. Yeah, I'm um, not really a fan of that either. They had plenty of time to get that in before or after. I don't know yeah. what that was for. Even my friend Steven that does the show, he texted me and like, commercial break? Yeah. Really? And I was like, you know, I thought the same thing. So. I agree, man. Uh, as far as uh, anything else on the match, I feel like Neville is going to be a big-time player in the next year or so yeah. for the WWE. And we have plenty more to go on talking to him about Raw and everything like that. But it was a good overall showing, I thought, for Definitely. the match. So we'll get more Neville in here soon. Um, Ambrose Harper. Uh, I thought it was kind of a ridiculous finish to start it off. And you could tell the crowd was really pissed off. Yeah. Uh, when, I, they, when they went backstage and he jumped in the SUV and then Ambrose jumped in and they just drew, drove off. And, and then it just kind of went to no finish. The crowd just instantly booed. Yeah. To me, I mean... <sighs> If you're gonna do that, you're gonna have to do something to like keep the crowd interested in it between. Or if I you're mean, gonna have a payoff with that, you got to have a bigger payoff than what they did. Because we can go ahead and just say it right now. They ended up yeah. coming back, of course, and continuing the fight. But it was right there at the building. Like I, I would have loved them show up, you know, at like Wrigley Field or something. Would have been great. That would have been awesome, and that's something that they could have done on a pre-tape earlier right. in the day. Right. I just didn't get this break at all in the match. No. It didn't help the match any, and when they got back, you know, it only lasted a few minutes. They filled yeah. up the ring with chairs, and he did that power bomb on Ambrose, which was kind of impressive, onto the chairs. But then oh, yeah. Ambrose hit that dirty deeds, and I thought he was going to hit it on the chairs, but he didn't even come close, so. No, he actually cleared out a nice little spot there. Right, So, and, and that was so quick. It was like, what's the payoff for them ju- jumping in that SUV and taking off and getting that kind of crowd reaction because you could see that on the next um, segment they had Triple H doing that, you know, telling someone to go find Ambrose and Harper on the phone. Yeah, Kane. And, and then they had Kane, Triple H, and Rollins do a little promo bickering and arguing about the cage match. And then uh, Triple H told them to uh, get on the same page. And the crowd yep. started chanting, boring. Yep. And did you notice that they uh, noticeably muted those chants? Oh yeah, dude! You can tell that they they cranked down the they cranked down the crowd and up. Well, they let it go for a few seconds, but then they cranked the crowd down and up the audio big time, and you could just tell. It, oh yeah. So they didn't like uh, the uh, they didn't like the boring chance. Nope, Kevin Dunn did not like it. So he dropped the boring chance. I did want to note that. So yes, the crowd did, was not into it by that point. I'm mean, at that point. I was like, this is a bad opening. It was kind of to me. I mean. <sighs> That's one problem I had with it. That's one problem I had with the pay-per-view was that match. I just was like, I, I expected so much more. Yeah. To, to me, the best things about the match were that, uh, to me, these two guys are the, the kings of the best facial expressions in the entire federation. <laughs> Ambrose and Harper have these weird looks. And um, they do. Harper is a guy that I would really love to watch. He Every time I see him, he defies the traditional big guy style uh you know like a guy like a kevin nash right or sid or something he really like does that. because he can get around for a big guy unlike those guys i mean this guy's throwing you know spinning clotheslines and stuff that sid and nash couldn't even imagine he no is way. a little shorter though was he like six eight i think so yeah okay but uh he had no yeah, no appearance I, mean, I was gonna say no appearance from the berserker either no, no berserker, no hus hus hus. I was severely not even dis- not even on raw. No, but I had to get that in there before I forgot. That's that's strange. Uh, no, I I thought we would see him somewhere. I guess maybe he's getting a little break. Maybe they're going to repackage him as the new berserker. You never know. Yeah, hey, I'll I'll hold out hope for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but as you were saying, so th- this match though, I mean, just fell to short me, of, fell short of expectation. Let me just say that. 
It did. I uh, did like them fighting back up through the uh, ramp and stuff, though, and up through the backstage area. I thought that felt like a lot of attitude area right there. Uh, that's ex- you stole the words right out of my yeah. mouth. That that part of it kind of took me back to the old Attitude Era, twenty four seven rule hardcore matches. It did, it did, it was cool. But it just, didn't have that great payoff. Of no, like, not a payoff at all. And when they came back, they didn't really capitalize on what they had going. I mean, that really could have paid off good if they were in the str- actually in the streets of Chicago, like you thought they would end up. Yeah. Like what did they exactly. do? Just drive around pulling at each other or did he jump in the passenger side and say just go back to the arena and we'll keep going or yeah that was how are uh, you gonna fight in an suv for that long yeah it's kind of hard to suspend disbelief whenever they do stuff like that (laughs) he's gonna fight for that long and then come back is what i was thinking sheesh so they could at least done something in the parking lot or something i don't know it was bad but uh yeah ambrose gets the win later on we don't even have to talk about that uh, yep. So after that uh, promo that I talked about the chance, then we had uh, Ziggler and Sheamus in the Kiss My Arse match. Now, I was saying that uh, possibly no one would get their arse kissed. Yep. And it almost happened, but uh, it, it ended up with uh, Sheamus getting the pin. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Sheamus uh, low-blowed Ziggler instead of kissing his ass like he was supposed to. And then of Sheamus broke kicked him and picked Ziggs up and uh, forced him to kiss his ass, which, I don't know, looked to me like it didn't look much like a, a ass kiss to me. He was, it was it was more like an outer hip thigh area, and and his for more more forehead than anything of Ziggler, which, which I guess the, that's all the more lucky for us. That's perfectly fine. It was fine with me. I, I just didn't see the point of either one of them wanting to have their ass kissed. So uh, this whole kiss me arse, oh, I kiss me arse, fella. Yeah, you're gonna kiss my arse. It's PG era. I didn't get it. I mean, the last time we had a kiss my ass match. We saw Billy Gunn's face in a large woman's ass. <laughs> Nobody was entertained, I assure you. And, and what an extreme rule, too. Like, Yeah. Wow. On. They came out with it. That's extreme, man. You know, to, to me, the my favorite thing of this entire match happened before the match, and that was Eden's introduction. It was so awesomely awkward on purpose. <laughs> She's, the following is a hey, kiss my arse match. Kiss me, arse <laughs> Where was Hornswoggle during this, anyway? I, uh, he must have been in Little People's Court under he, the ring. He could have done something there. They, they thought he was going to come back on Raw, but he didn't come back. Uh, I did be... see I did see some speculation on him returning because he like posted some picture about him heading to the arena or something. I don't know. Uh, I'm always open for more Hornswoggle. Uh, I don't know about that. But, uh, but uh, Seamus, though, did you see at the end his mohawk lost all of its gel? And I was, <laughs> thinking, I was like, he what looked, a mop top, dude. <laughs> yeah, he looked like a, uh, a game rooster. A large oh my albino Lord. game rooster. <laughs> he say, does look man, straight up stupid. I'm surprised Vince didn't see that haircut and go, God damn, pal, Red Rooster 2015. Can you cluck like a chicken, pal? I think we're going to uh, bring the uh, Red Rooster gimmick back for you. <laughs> Let me call Terry in here and see if this is gimmick infringement. Yeah. Oh, God. Terry Seamus. Taylor. Hey. He, made our, hey. he made our worst gimmicks. Uh, rightfully so. I hope he was near the top. Oh, well, he had to be. The, the, uh, the huge yeah. cock. <laughs> the giant cock. Yes. You know, I got to say, the only thing that I really like about this new look, Seamus, is his attitude. I felt like Seamus being this the for happy, a long time, yeah. It, it's been overdue, man. It's yeah, really been overdue. Yeah, he was getting to be like a real Muppet, like a real-life Muppet. He was. <laughs> and that's very apropos. Ever since they put that Muppet on TV that looked like him against him, I was like, he's a real-life Muppet now. Beaker, yes. Okay, you got his name. So, cause I, Do you remember that? Now he do, rips, boy, when his hair jumped out, when his gel fell out, he almost looked more like him than he did before. Yeah, because he had that. <laughs> he really did with that one that one little lock coming up. I, was... I was the only one that noticed his hair, but oh no, no, think... that's, that's been what. Trust me, in a kiss me arse match, I was trying to pay attention to above the head as much as possible. I was thinking, I was thinking he wanted to get that match done quick after he noticed that gel falling out. It looked like it. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully his beard beads don't fall out. I think he knows he looks stupid. I just uh, it's it's oh, too perfect. I'm gonna go on before I start crying. Okay, <laughs> uh, we had uh, New Day versus Kid and Cesaro, the tag title match. I just want to say that New Day won 
uh, via Xavier Woods interference and a Kingston roll up, which Xavier's yep. been doing that about every week. So you think they'd catch on that this guy's going to do something? Like get yeah. over there, Natalia. Get over there and guard this guy. Well, she definitely got over there. I'm going to uh, tell you what, though. One hell of a match. Oh, I loved it. And, and thank God it wasn't on the pre-show because it probably would have showed up the rest of the card. I agree. Honestly, that was, uh, to me, they kind of stole the show there. They early did. On. Man, that was a hell of a match. I'd like to go back and watch it again. I almost did, but I ended up watching the uh, big show Reigns again instead. But we'll get there. But uh, yeah. I wanted to watch that tag match again, but by the time I hit the replay, they were already passed it, so I just went on. But uh, I would like to go back and watch that match again. New Day with the titles. Jeff Crow of the show actually called that, man. I've, I've been calling for it for a while, and it finally happened. Why? I, I like New Day. I mean, okay. to me, it's all, it's all about the big payoff whenever they finally just lose it. Okay. They're like, you guys are a bunch of idiots. The hell with you. No more happy. They do have talent, which people aren't really looking at. Yeah, I would have to say it's kind of confusing as what they are. I mean, it's it's like my friend Jack said on one of our uh, WrestleMania discussions. Are they a gospel group? That's what I thought. That's what I thought at first is they were supposed to be this gospel group. But then they came out there without even talking in their debut and stuff. And I was just so confused for months about what these guys were doing. I still am. Yeah, and of course now they have... The clap. New day sucks. New day. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Biggie, Kofi, and Xavier Woods. God, I hate Biggie. Have the clap. Yeah, they Big, do. They got Biggie, 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 can't you see? Do you like Biggie? I, I, I kind of like the guy. It's something of, I don't hate the guy, like, personally or anything. I just don't like his character right now. But No, nah, his, nah, his character is kind of bland, but... On Twitter, the guy's hilarious, and to me, every time he hits that spear, uh, on, you know, like we saw in this match on the Tyson kid, yeah, spear somebody off the apron. Anytime you see somebody that big just flying through the air, I always mark out. Did he go all the way through the ropes on this one? He did all the way through. See, I didn't see floor. that. I, mean, I missed that spot. Yeah, it was uh, it was near the end there. It was uh, that's fantastic. pretty impressive. I remember he did that against Rusev or something the first time he did that, and it was pretty. Impressive. Yep. But I've never seen a guy that big pull a move like that off. He's a beast, man. Yeah, he is. So I guess it shows you why he's there. Definitely. So after that, you had that little promo spot where the uh, SUV pulled up, and New Day did get splashed by Ambrose from the top of the SUV. Yeah. <laughs> I must know. So that was their first uh, moment with the titles. Yes, yeah, sweaty, so, squashed fellas. I don't see him having it long. I would say probably not. I I think they're probably going to be transitional champions to the Lucha Dragons. You think? And then payback, they're done? Maybe uh, a tri- maybe a triple threat or something at payback. Triple match. threat, four-way, yeah. Because you can't not have Kid Zaro get their tag match. Of course. I mean, they have the automatic uh, rematch clause there, so. Okay, well, moving on from that, we had uh, Cena, Rusev, Russian chain match. I thought it was blah, man, really, for a Russian chain match. I had to, uh, I'm going to have to agree 110%. It was the, to me, it was just like watching a mid-1980s NWA match and not in a good way. Yeah, no blood. Um, it, it was just slow, methodical. You can't, have, you can't have no blood in a chain match. No, and, and also it was the four corners rules chain yeah, match. Yeah, I wasn't, hated that. And then they had the gimmicky lights that lit up. Oh, I hate when they do stuff like that. Yeah, and you know, at this point, I was actually watching this event with my Uncle Ray. Right. And oh, I bet it, he threw up during it then. Well, <laughs> not quite. He He's not really like a, you know, a hardcore wrestling fan. He's more of a casual. But and, he remembers when it was good. So. Oh, absolutely, definitely. But to him, it was like, you know, I was trying to explain the rules to him, and he's just like, I don't get it. This, and, this is stupid. Don't you hate the gimmicky lights and stuff? That they, when, they, when they try to be too modern, I hate it. Yeah, I Just mean... Just stick to the way it is, guys. You don't have to have a light on each pole. Yeah. To me, I mean, Russian chain match, just tie the two guys together and whoever gets pinned or submits. There like, we go. can count, you know? Yeah. That works. <laughs> that works. We can count without a light up there. Yeah, but oh, this, this this was definitely not a Nikita Koloff no. classic Russian chain no. match. No, when at they all. when they actually did plug that, you know that they had one before, like Nikita Koloff and whatever Ivan Koloff. Yep. Uh, I kind of laughed because you know you go back and check that out as a fan, and you're like, wow. And then you know they're bleeding all over. They're beating the shit out of each other with a chain. Then you go watch this, and you're like, wow. They really lessened their own product by saying that in my opinion 
Uh, well, they pretty much cheapened the gimmick as well. Yeah, they did. So, so uh, Cena wins by touching all four corners. So where do, where does Rusev go from here? I know next night on Raw that he's going to have another match, but I mean, yeah, not um, to give away any spoilers, but we're going to be talking about it anyway. So Yeah, is, Rusev does have another match in his future. Um, we'll kind of get to that more I, I can't. Can you actually see him winning this next match, though? I just I don't know what they're going to do with Rusev, and now it looks like they're going to transition Lana away because, like I didn't say, he sent Lana backstage because the crowd was uh, chanting for her and she was acknowledging it during the match. <laughs> that was pretty hilarious, uh, I thought. So it looks like they're transitioning Lana to break up with Rusev. I'm not sure where she would go unless she actually became an in-ring competitor. That or joins the authority outright. Ooh, now we're thinking, aha! Because we did have later on Rusev cutting the promo, and then uh, Lana came up, and uh, wasn't he yelling at her backstage? Yeah, he was oh, yelling yeah. at her backstage, and then... In, uh, in La- Russian, Yeah, Lana nodded sadly, and then walked off, and then she knocked on a door, and when she was entering the door, they panned over and showed that it was the authority's room. Yeah, and then mysteriously, I mean, I don't know what she did to get a, a yeah, match Yeah, and signed. then later on she came back, and when Rusev was cutting a promo on Cena, and Lana came in the middle, and she said that she the I Quit match has been set for payback. So what That's did right. she what did she do with Triple H for that? Um, I'm thinking a good old fashioned. Did they even sh- <laughs> did they even show Triple H or Stephanie out throughout the night? They yeah, they, yeah, they the did. Old- they did in that cell phone segment. That that was basically it. Yeah, I, I mean, was he even at the place? I don't even know. Uh, maybe it was because he wasn't Stephanie. on. He wasn't on Raw. No, he wasn't. And neither That's was right. neither was Stephanie. So strangely enough, by their absence. Yeah, I just That's was kind of confused that they weren't there for the pay per view or the Raw. I mean, he could have been there for the pay per view, but it was just that backstage segment, which could have been pre shot. Yeah. So continuing on from that horrible chain match. Like, so far, like, the pay-per-view hasn't been very good other than the New Day match. Yeah, and So I'm I mean, giving you this, I'm giving an average on this pay-per-view, really. I would say about the same. I didn't go into it with very high expectations. I never do on these. Uh, not on these. No. If it's one of the original Big Four Survivor Series, SummerSlam, Rumble Mania, yeah. they better, they damn well better deliver. But yeah. on something like this, hey, it's hit or miss. Hey, it was better than Fastlane, the worst pay-per-view of all time. Fastlane was almost as equally terrible as the Over Limit pay-per-views. Oh, Over the which, Limit. Which I'm not even going to get into the timing of naming a pay-per-view Over the Limit after a slew of your developmental talent down in Tampa get DUIs. <laughs> oh my I mean, what, are we going to have a breathalyzer challenge? <laughs> All right, Batista, you pounded down three twelve packs. I think you're the winner. <laughs> did he get? Did he get a DUI? I, I don't think Batista did. Uh, I know there was quite a few. Uh, he people was just down club. There he, was, he was just clubbing still then. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. The club. Although, uh, although I will say, just as a little sidebar, I feel like if Batista were to come to like a keg party, he would just drink the entire keg, bang <laughs> everybody's girlfriend, and leave. Yeah, and I wouldn't even try to fight with him. I wouldn't even be mad. I'd just be like, see you, Batista. Have a good one, buddy. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks for not ripping my fucking head off while you're here, you know? Thanks, man. This guy, <laughs> the guy is un- unbelievable. For his age, how big he is and strong still, it's just unbelievable. So, uh, did we talk about Nikki Bella and Naomi? No, mm-hmm. Naomi for the title? We, we didn't. We okay. did not get to mention yet. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. One hell of a match. Hell of a match. <laughs> Naomi has glowing shoes. Oh, boy. I was being sarcastic. But Nikki wins via rack attack and uh, Bree's help. But, yeah, but uh, Na- uh, Naomi, no surprise there. Naomi did debut a new theme. And new theme, new, attire. new look. I do like the new Naomi really better than the old. So I like the old Naomi as well uh, uh, for many, many reasons. Okay. So you don't really like the new Naomi? No, absolutely. Okay. I, I mean, as far in the ring, she's the shit. Yeah. But she's great to look at, as yeah. are all the Divas. She's not the greatest in ring. As I thought she was better in the ring than she was. She's better than a lot of them. I mean, we don't have, like, a I whole think she's roster. Becoming, she's becoming more exposed now because she's just, they're trying to push her. Yeah, definitely. And I, I feel like, you know, I, I like to joke about the Divas division, but. It is bad. It's bad, but at least we don't have, like, Ashley Massaro and Kelly Kelly every week. Yeah, you've got I mean, to go back to the days, too, like the Attitude Era. When those girls were wrestling, they were the worst matches you've ever seen. 
Uh, I can I can go back even further to Velvet McIntyre and freaking fabulous Moolah. But at least Moolah and them actually wrestled hard. Like these girls in the Attitude Era were. I don't know. Some of those matches were pathetic. If you ever go look at them. Yeah, definitely. Like I have, Medusa, we could talk all day about divas. I don't know. Medusa was better than any of those girls in the Attitude Era. She was like legit, I said. Man. She could have fit in good today. Like wow. Absolutely. She kicked ass in Japan. If she could, if I'm perfectly certain that if you can get over in japan and handle it you can get over anywhere yeah so um we're gonna move on from that because i don't think there's much to go on over there we talked about you know rusev's backstage then we got uh big show roman reigns last man standing match rain speared show through the announce table he stood on it and counted down with the ref for the win now the only thing i found funny here is it seemed like big show could have just took that freaking announces table with one arm and tossed it off him <laughs> so of course he could so, so did roman reigns like mid you know thought think hey i need to go stand on that to make it look better i don't know what was going on there but uh, uh, well he did and i mean that was good that he did because it looked pretty ridiculous before that. even with him standing on there big show could have probably tossed it off easily easily yeah, but i did that match was good though probably it was, probably uh, the best match that reigns has had so far but can so he do too. that without the gimmicks though is what i'm thinking like I don't yeah. know, man. You give this guy just a straight wrestling match because even in the Brock match it was good, but he just took a straight beating. So you, I, I don't know. I want to see this guy wrestle without any gimmicks. I do I too. Mean, how many tables and stuff did they go through in this match? It was a hell of a match. Enough, yeah, I, dude. To me, I mean, it's kind of like you said. This is one of the best matches that Reigns has had, and I kind of credit Big Show. A lot I know. For I'm going to say something too that Big Show kind of redeemed himself with me on this match. I thought, man, I hate Big Show. He can't do anything, but man. This guy was uh, taking slams off the top rope and everything. I was like, geez. Yeah, it, he was definitely on. I, <laughs> I cracked up at one point in the match. He goes outside uh, to the announce table. Oh, yeah. And takes the notes and says, what do you mean Big Show needs to lose weight? Smart ass. I, I thought that was I did hilarious. too. What do you mean Big Show needs to lose weight? Smart <laughs> ass. And then he's like, that's yours, Cole said to JBL. <laughs> that was pretty hilarious I don't know but overall this match was probably the match of best match of the card I'd say that and the New Day tag match I would agree uh, I was uh, I would say that one and the Bad News Barrett Neville match were my favorites yep those were my three too but I'd have to say Big Show Reigns probably delivered more than any of them so it, sure. it really succeeded my expectations definitely exceeded my expectations so um we had the Kane Orton backstage segment. Uh, he kind of claimed he wanted the old Kane back, pretty much. Yeah, and you know, I've noticed here recently we've seen Kane's mask shown on camera a little bit. Oh, I didn't see that. I noticed it on the Go Home Raw 2 uh, Extreme Rules that it was there in the background. So Really? Or it, Man, no, that's like an Easter me, egg it, that it, nobody I, knows. I think it was on Extreme Rules, actually, in the background. A little Easter egg. I, I'm pretty sure I noticed it. So, if it, to me, if that's there in the background, it's there for a reason. And, and do we need another turn? Like, At this point, I mean, Big Show and Kane have been turned so many times. It, I, The damage is done. I'm sick of them, really. So, Steven loves laughing at me about Kane and Big Show. But he's just yeah. He loves everybody hating him, and they just keep rubbing it in our face. Yeah, well, but but Kane Kane's getting over as a face now, in my opinion. He is. He's finally been pushed so much by the authority and everybody that he's starting to kind of come back around. Okay, so uh, after that, we had Bo Dallas come out and cut that anti-Chicago promo, claiming about people not bathing, etc., whatever. Uh, <laughs> then Ryback came out. Bo beat Ryback down, and then he did that mic botch. Did you see the mic botch? And he just screamed it out instead because he couldn't find a mic that worked. Yeah. That was kind of fun. <laughs> that was funny. Well, as I was saying. Okay, and then Ryback interrupted the uh, Mike Botch and got him with a yes. shell shock. So that wasn't a match or anything. It was just a beat down by Ryback, which he'd try to get payback the next night. So Yeah. Uh, I don't really have anything to say about that. Dallas is just being used horribly. I don't know. They could do something else with him. They're going to have to do something with him if he's ever going to be a credible threat. I mean, if he's ever going to be more than just a job guy, they're going to have to give him some kind of win of some sort. Right. I don't know. That's all I got to really say on that is I don't know what they're doing with Bo Dallas. So. I don't know, but I'm sure he will continue to Bo leave. I wonder why they didn't. Yeah, Bo leave. I wonder why they didn't um, start the uh, Wyatt feud on the pay-per-view. I don't know. I was thinking they could have done that. 
Uh, I don't know why Bray Wyatt didn't come out and help his baby brother. Right, that would have been a great spot right there. That, that Just to see those two look at each other <laughs> and give each other a weird look would have been perfect. Right. So, uh, after that, it was pretty much the main event, which was Rollins and Orton in the cage. Orton used a pedigree, actually, in this match. Yes. And uh, Kane actually stopped Orton from slamming the door. He slammed the door on both their heads in this match, I noted. Yep, at the end. Uh, he entered the cage and double choke slammed J&J. Then he, yep. then he choke slammed Orton, and then he choke slammed Rollins, and he took uh, Orton's arm and covered Rollins with it. Orton kicked out. Yep. So he picked up Orton for a tombstone. Uh, Orton reversed it for an RKO, but then Rollins hit his own RKO and got the pin on him. So it was a cool finish there at the end, I thought. It was, but, I mean, wasn't the stipulation that they never said the RKO is banned for Randy Orton. They said the RKO is banned. True, and then Lawler stressed that on the mic afterwards. He was claiming the RKO was banned, the RKO was banned, and then JBL was claiming, yeah, but not for Rollins. That's what my... uh, I don't know, I was under the uh, impression that it was banned for just Orton, so. Yeah, I mean. But the next I, night, they did say he broke the rules, so. That's right. To me, it was just one of those dusty finishes. Just get out of the pay-per-view, keep the belt, let's keep this going. Felt like the end of a Raw. It did. That's exactly what it felt, All felt these, like a, these pay- a super Raw. Yeah, those p- pay-per-views are a super Raw. Yeah. That's and, what they are. That's kind of unacceptable. I mean, it's a damn good thing I'm only paying nine ninety nine to watch them and not forty nine ninety nine. I think that's why they're doing that too, is because they know we're only paying like ten bucks. It's like we're not going to give them what they used to. Nope, they don't deserve it. Vince uh, didn't get to be a billionaire from not knowing what the hell he's doing. So. Right, right. So uh, overall thoughts we said on Extreme Rules, I said it was average, but that was the end. Uh, yeah, it's not, very average. It, was, it wasn't nothing to get real excited over, so. Nothing to write home about. Perfectly acceptable wrestling. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I think Rain, Reigns and Show got, I don't know, between that and the tag match, I don't know who was better. I would have to give the edge to the tag team yeah, match. Yeah, just because they didn't use any gimmicks. No gimmicks, and I was, I mean, Reigns and Show are expected to have a good match. I really didn't expect that out of the New Day and Kid and Cesaro, and they completely blew me out of the water. Props to those guys. As well as I mentioned earlier, Bad News and Neville. Yeah, Bad News and Neville had a good match, but just that commercial in between makes it not the best. Agreed. So, I mean, we missed a whole chunk of match there. Like, I hated that yep. commercial in between there, so they need to it, really stop doing that. It, it To me, it kills the flow completely. Oh, it ruins any momentum the wrestlers have going, too. So, I wonder what they think about that. Uh, I would hope that uh, somebody is telling them while they're in the ring, okay, we're on break. But, you know, they have that app. Uh, I didn't ever launch the app for that second screen thing for the pre-show, but why wouldn't they just show it on there? Or show a, a show a insert commercial, just like a little box. Hey, here's a commercial. Yeah, that's exactly what I would do. Like, I don't know. I just don't like, a like pop-up. going in the in the middle of the match to a commercial was a problem. So, but yeah, like I like you said, I think the tag match got it on that. So, yep. Agreed. Um, now we can just go on to Raw the next night because it was pretty much just the aftermath of Extreme Rules. So that's right. If you want to go on to this Raw right. that was Monday night, we're actually recording this on a Tuesday night, and uh, Raw was done on Monday, so we are a day late. So. That's right. We had Rollins come out and brag about winning. He called his move the SKO, the Seth KO. Uh, he called Kane the Crypt Keeper, actually. And then, <laughs> and then he said, "And then he said, no. He said, that's the gatekeeper, I mean. He said, the Crypt Keeper is a relic from the 90s that no one cares about. <laughs> oh, man. Kane said, that's fine. That's fine. If it wasn't for him and the illegal use of the RKO, that he wouldn't have won and still been champion. And then uh, Orton came out and said he deserves a rematch. He called Rollins Catwoman and Justin Bieber, which I like the Catwoman quote because I have been saying he looked like Batman, but I'll go with Catwoman. Uh, Definitely with that vinyl suit. He looks like uh, Catwoman for sure. Definitely. Um, And then Reigns came out, and uh, he told Rollins to shut the hell up, and he talked about them missing a giant due to his actions at Extreme Rules. He called himself the last man standing. He called... uh, Rollins, Justin Bieber again. So they're really like call him Justin Bieber. I don't know. Got to get those pop culture uh, references yeah, in said, there. Said if anyone deserves a rematch, it's him. Rollins sarcastically congratulated Reigns for winning a match, which I thought was kind of funny. 
Yeah. I said they both lost to him, and uh, him and Orton both lost to him, and neither deserve an opportunity at the title. Kane says that uh, both have good arguments, but says tonight that they set their differences aside and show Orton and Reigns who's the real power of the authority. And then Rollins said, a tag match? And Kane's like, yeah. And then he said that the fans get to choose who gets the next title shot against Rollins. So. And I most certainly did vote. I did will you? say that. We tried to I actually did. we tried to actually vote for this, but we couldn't get the app downloaded. So ah. she had it on her old phone. We tried to do it on my girlfriend's new phone, and we couldn't get the app downloaded. But we were pretty sure that the triple threat match would win anyway. I was too, but hey, for in, in the in the interest of full disclosure, I voted for Reigns Rollins. Right, but but here's the point though that they didn't even have that as a match yet. So. Right. That's kind of a spoiler. Anything to say about that opening segment? I thought they did have some funny moments and stuff, but like I've been saying for weeks now, what's up with the 20, 30-minute promos to kick the show off every week? That's such a relic of the NWO era. Can't we just kick it off with a Neville match and be excited? Kick it off with a hot opener that's going to get me immediately interested that this is going to be a Raw that I cannot miss. Yeah, like how about just kicking it off with Neville and Harper? Perfect. I mean, I would have been like, this is going to be a good Raw. Yeah, they didn't yeah. need this 20-minute promo out there. I, I just don't – it had no purpose, really. No, I, I tell you what I would love to see once for a change is a match joined in progress at the beginning of Raw, even. Yeah, Have the anything, guys already in the ring, already going. Anything is better than a 20, 30-minute promo at this point. Like, every week they're going to do this. Every week. Yep. So, at least it wasn't Triple H and Steph out there. Thank goodness. Which, as I said, they were nowhere to be found on this show. So. Oddly enough. I found that weird. Definitely. They're still out. I thought they were supposed to be back by this point, so I don't know. I didn't ne- never got any news or notes on that, although I didn't read any news after I got off work tonight, so I haven't seen anything uh, of note necessarily regarding them. I thought they I would have back. to assume that they maybe had to do a public appearance or something to do uh, with business. Or maybe they had to kiss somebody's ass, who knows. Maybe. Um maybe they're kissing Vis- Vince's ass so they don't lose their job. I have Vince, I've got a nice ass. <laughs> You can kiss my my ass and do tricks. My derriere. (laughs) Okay, uh, Ziggler, Bad News Barrett, first round of the King of the Ring. Sheamus caused a distraction on the mic and showed that picture from uh, Ziggler kissing his ass at the pay-per-view. And Bad News Barrett hit the bull hammer. I thought that was a good finish to get Ziggler out of there. Because like uh, Jason said, like he was pulling for Ziggler to win the whole thing when he first predicted it. And I'm like, well, looks like that's not going to happen. Yeah. Because <laughs> I could have so gave a good that. argument for Ziggler being the king of the ring, but. They, Absolutely. That, was that would be a, it's Historically, it is, at one time at least, was a great a launching pad for great people. Great stepping to... stone. I mean, that's where Austin 316 was born. Absolutely. I am and glad they brought the King of the Ring back. I am too. I'm a huge mark for tournaments of any kind, and this was great. As we said earlier, it would have been nice to see Daniel Bryan vacate the Intercontinental title and there be something more of a prize in there other than a crown. Right. Um, as we said, though, like this was a Monday night, and then tonight, which we were recording the show, they started at like 6 Central. So uh, the tournament is already finished, and we will report that after the last match we talk about on here. What yes. happened on King of the Ring? So, after that, they plugged the Orton Reigns versus Rollin, K- Rollin and Kane's match at the end. Mm-hmm. And uh, they plugged New Day coming up. Then we had uh, Big E and New Day versus, or it was just Big E with the New Day against yep. Kid with Cesaro and Natalia. Uh, Big E hit a clothesline after Woods held his ankle and allowed the pin. Uh, he hit a clothesline and then Woods held the ankle down and he got the pin. So That's right. Okay. So, oh. regardless. Once again, Xavier Woods running the interference. Uh, hey, at least New Day is getting some kind of reaction, even if it is New Day sucks. Right, New Day does suck. I mean, uh, the gimmick sucks. For yeah, sure. it really does. And and here's the thing, though. I mean, it, it, this match was just to keep the feud going for this week. Yeah, so it was. Really had no bearing other than that on the show. I would have loved to see a tag title rematch right there, right off the bat. I Cesaro and Kid versus. I, I really Biggie thought and Kofi. at first when they came out that's what was going to happen, and then I'm like, nope, it's a singles match. Yep, I would assume we'll probably see that at the pay per view. Yeah, I'm saying payback, maybe even Lucha Dragons in there. It does seem like they're going to push uh, Kid and Cesaro and Natalia as faces, though. They got over awesome. I mean, at at Extreme Rules, they were the faces. Right. So, do you th- do you, would you say the full face turn for them now, or do you think they're still wondering? I think they're still a little questionable, but I, hey, I, that's a team I could get behind for sure. I mean, those New, guys are great. New Day. Obviously, is the hills. They have to realize that. 
They have to be, even if they are like the troll, not officially heels. I mean, they're definitely hated. Yeah, they have to know that. So, moving on from that, they showed shots from uh, Cena and Rusev's chain match in the Lana storyline that went along in it. So, yep. uh, Then they went on to Bo Dallas versus Ryback, which we talked about the night before. And uh, Ryback won with the shell shock. Um, what was cool about this, though, the lights went out. Wyatt showed up with a dimly lit ring right behind him and uh, hit him with the sister Abigail. Uh, Wyatt stood over him with his arms out talking, you know, doing his uh, gibberish like he does. I thought that was cool as hell to set up the Ryback feud. I like it. Uh, I think this is going to be something that's going to really elevate Ryback. Uh, Bray Wyatt's a guy who can, to me, everybody he works with, uh, it usually turns out pretty good. Uh, I liked seeing Ryback just immediately charge Bray Wyatt once he saw that he was behind him. And Bray just rolled right over with the sister Abigail. Yeah, that that was a good Abigail. That, that, that was great, man. Um, I also like he got involved in his brother's match like we talked about. So. Yeah. But Bo I'll Dallas understand. being buried once more. He did come out talking a bunch, Bo Dallas, but I didn't even know what he said. So uh, It was nothing above any importance. I think he importance. was talking about Extreme Rules, that what happened. I'm pretty sure it went something, something, Bo leaves. I do like how whenever he showed up in the ring that they left it like dimly lit, like just the spotlight on him. Yeah, the creepy light. Yeah, that was cool. Definitely. Um, that should be his trademark, you know. For sure. And I do like that the taker loss didn't bury him any. Like, he's it just still, a, he's still it, the face of fear or whatever, and they don't really even talk about it. No, nah, they don't have to, man. I mean, Bray Wyatt, I, I could talk all day about Bray Wyatt just because he I, he's probably my favorite guy in the entire company. Well, I just like to see it because it was a bad match. Yeah. And yeah. It, it didn't hurt him any, though, because his ankle was hurt. And I think right now he's just getting healed up, so that's why we yep. didn't see him on the last pay-per-view. Right. I would say we'll probably see that as well at Payback. Ryback versus Wyatt. Right. Okay, next we had uh, Cena come out and talk about giving Rusev props on not quitting. Uh, yep. He says that'll end at Payback, do- payback though, during their I Quit match. Mm-hmm. Uh, he talked never surrendering on American soil and says that Payback is the final chapter of Rusev Cena because if he quits, there's no way he deserves a rematch. And says if he loses to Rusev, Rusev will never see him again. And uh, so do you think, did that kind of put like his career on the line or is he just saying he'll never go after the U.S. title again? I was kind of confused. Uh, it was confusing, but what I pretty much gathered out of it is that if Rusev does beat him, he's not going to invoke the rematch clause. He wins. Okay, so we're not going to see Cena leave for any time soon. I would doubt it, but it could happen. I mean, uh, he, he kind of needs a break. I mean, uh, hey, to me, it, it did Randy Orton a world of good to be off TV for a few months there. So give and it to Cena too. I think Cena could be off for a few months, really. Don't they, sure. don't they have something for him to do for meanwhile? Like I, I, seeing him every week is kind of just like yeah. If, if if I were WWE, I would book him on Make a Wish visits for two months and let him let him heal up, let him come back renewed and fresh, and uh, people might really get behind him. Right, I think so too. I think he needs a break, and and he yeah. really doesn't need to have a lengthy U.S. title run. No, it's only I mean, gonna hurt. All... It's only gonna hurt Rusev if he loses again. Yeah, and there's only so much you can do with this old school 80s USA Russia angle thing. I mean, right, it's been I, done to death. Right, and I said, where's Rusev going to go if he loses this match again? Like we talked about Extreme Rules. If he loses this match, where's he going to go? Like, It'll be way down the card as far as his value, for sure. I don't see him losing three straight. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to me, even if the guy did go almost a year undefeated. I don't see Cena ever coming back to challenge him again either. No, and that was an oddly specific thing to mention from John Cena, so that could be something to look at as perhaps a tell of the result. All right, so we'll see what happens there. I don't know, it just just seems like not three in a row. Uh, He issued the open challenge, though, the U.S. Open. Heath Slater came out to accept it, but Roos have attacked him from behind. He said he's going to make Cena quit at payback and talked about a little bit of other stuff. And then the Russian flag came down over Cena. Oh, yeah. So I thought that was a cool little spot. Definitely. After last night, especially after Cena won and dra- uh, dropped the U.S. flag, that was cool to see Rusev come back and say, nope. Yeah. Sorry, oh, I, I forgot to note that on the extreme rules that he did. He won and dropped the U.S. flag Rusev style. Yeah. I had that noted, but I don't think we talked about it because it was just a bad match. So. Yeah. But, yeah, he dropped the uh, Russian flag down. Anything else to talk about that? I think that was a good spot, though. And I'm looking forward to see what happens. Likewise. Rollins shown uh, making an argument on Reigns or Orton not deserving a title shot to Kane backstage. 
Kane says since he carries himself like the man, he thought he could handle it, and he changed the poll to Randy Orton, Reigns, or a triple threat match, like we talked. And uh, Seth got heated, and Kane says to calm down. They have a match, and afterwards they'll see who wins the pull. So Kane really face ended up there. And uh, I'm under the impression that Kane is done with the. Didn't he put his two weeks notice in? I believe that was what I heard. Yeah. And I haven't heard him take it back. So I guess next week he's done. We're gonna have to see. Well, I noticed. I, I listened to last week's show, like I do always before the show. We do this week just so I can, you know, tackle any points I made. Yeah. And uh, that was one point I made, I remember, was that he said he was going to put his two weeks notice in. So, Well, I guess we've got two weeks to find out what happens. Maybe we'll see him well, go get his mask. This would be one week, I guess, from then. Ah, right? uh, yes. I don't know. Right. So next week would be the second week. That's right. And we haven't seen Triple H since, so we'll see what happens there. I don't know. Maybe they won't do anything about it. but We will see. It looks right now like Kane really doesn't care what he's doing, so it makes sense. If he's going to quit anyway, why not screw over Rollins? Exactly. Um, we had R-Truth against Stardust. R-Truth got the win with the lie detector, is what they call it. The um, lie detector? Yeah, that's what his move's called. So, huh. R-Truth with the win there. That was the first round of the King of the Ring, by the way. And I was surprised that Truth was even in the King of the Ring. The, it, to me, I mean, they have to have somebody in there for the next round so somebody can be eliminated. I was surprised and... Stardust didn't win. I was kind of too. Uh, I figured he could be that guy to go in there and uh, and lose, but Where, what do you see, What do you see them doing with Stardust? Like we talked before we came on the show. I mean, I I liked him as Cody. You didn't like him as Cody. Uh, I I don't like him as Stardust. You do. Like I don't know what they're gonna do with this guy. It's not necessarily that I like Stardust. It's just that I I definitely do like him better than regular old Cody Rhodes. He's got a personality. Yeah, I mean he's he's got something different going. Even if it is the same deal as his brother Gold Dust. Right. Uh, to me, that whole angle is still unfulfilled. Right. I don't understand why they just stopped that in his tracks. That's just I, I that should have really been a mania match. Seeing... I was really looking forward to seeing that at WrestleMania. I was too, and I have been for years, and I don't know, they just won't go there for some reason. It could have been one hell of a match. And that could have got the Stardust gimmick off of him too, I noted, but it never did happen. Nope. They could have fought for the likeness, you know. Exactly, that would have been great. Yeah. After that, we had Fandango, Fandango, and Adam Rose. Man, I was like, I can't believe they threw this as a time killer. Uh, that uh, I'm pretty sure I didn't even watch it. I just got yeah. up and went and got a beer or something. <laughs> Actually, during this, uh, Rosa was revealed as a rosebud, and uh, that distracted Fondango. Fond- How do you even say this? Fondango? And then uh, Rose got the win with the party foul off the distraction. Yep. And then she says she can't believe that he chose them over me, talking to Fondango. Yeah. And then uh, she says now, though, she's found someone who treats her like a flower and turned and kissed uh, Adam Rose all the way to the ground. Yeah, that uh, looked pretty, uh, as, pretty serious there. As Fondango looked on. So there's yeah. a little love triangle going on there. Oh, boy. So that's Congra- what we got. Congratulations, Adam Rose. I'm glad they're going to uh, keep the uh, storyline going. I, I just, why? Yeah, I mean, it's it, like you said, it's if kind their of a jobs, If they don't lose their jobs soon, I guess they got somewhere to go. Yep. So... Rosa has to stay on the main roster somehow. Exactly. And boy, is the Fondango thing already bombed or what? Like, it, He's not it even bombed. into it himself. I mean, at this point, just turn him into regular old Johnny Curtis. That's like, what I'd right. say, yeah. Anything. Anything but Fondango. Because, I mean, he, he came out there not even into it, in my opinion. Yeah, he, he really wasn't. Like, and... like, man, come on. Why are they doing this again? It's it's one of those guys that they give him a gimmick, and it's like, are you really going to see this guy as the, the champ one day? Right. No. No. So. And Adam Rose is bad, too. So. Yeah. Okay, so after that, we had uh, Bree interviewed backstage about Daniel Bryan's injury, and she said he would do anything to compete and says they feel so great because the WWE Universe loves them and he loves them so much. And then Naomi came and jumped her out of nowhere and says that no one cared about her or her husband. So <laughs> That was pretty great Yeah, from Naomi uh, healing it up there. Yeah, and then Naomi had a match with Brie Bell after that with Nikki, and Naomi won via the kick to the face and a roll-up. So what do you think about that whole deal? We kind of talked about the Divas and Naomi and Bellas already, but any notes on that? I did like that little backstage segment. No one cares about her. You are your husband. Dude, that was pretty brutal. Uh, other than that, yeah, I'm glad. I was glad to see Naomi's shoes were working a lot better on Raw than they did at the pay per view. <laughs> Them shoes aren't gonna last long. Nah, afraid not. No, they're not gonna like that. But she did get the win. 
Yeah, it looks so. like she's getting a little push. So and uh, as as I mentioned on the Jay Uso injury video, um, you know, we got Jimmy Uso laying around here. And uh, what's he going to do? Uh, they're going to have to do something with him. And it looks like Naomi's going full on heels. So well, I uh, like could, that opinion you made on that video, by the way. That was good. Thank you very much. Wow. Perhaps that could be something we see in the future. We'll have to both of us stay tuned. And uh, I'm sure we will each keep you updated, our listeners in the future. Yeah, because I do say, I, I do like Naomi as a hill, so I could see, like, if they brought Uso back and healed out with her, it'd be a good move. And, like, I always thought they should split them up and try to make them go, on, one of them go on their own and see what happens. Yeah, give them, the, give them the old Booker T push. Yeah. Why not? So, next we had a first round King of the Ring match between Ambrose and Sheamus. Actually, Dolph Ziggler interrupted this after so long and uh, drove Sheamus off backstage, giving Sheamus the uh, win by DQ. Ambrose was pissed about the DQ, but nothing yep. he could do. Yep. Uh, so Sheamus, Sheamus advances. Sheamus advances. Not much to say about that. Not much from here either. Sheamus, uh, of course, would move on, and his next opponent in the King of the Ring. Uh, let's see. Who did he take on? Neville. But that match That's right. Happened. That's Well, yeah. We'll Spoiler alert. That, Spoiler know. alert. Yeah. So, he did move on, though. So after that, we had the little spot of showing Miz keeping his name last week on Raw from the Summer yeah. Distraction. And then we had the Damian Sandell promo, which I was surprised. I he was ta- too. He it talked, was kind of captivating. Yeah, he talked the original bathrobe gimmick, talked about being told he was not entertaining enough, and talked about the copycat gimmick, brought up the Bret Hart, Magneto, LeBron James, Vince McMahon. And then he brought up Damian Mizdow and says that uh, Mizdow lost a lot of respect with the peers but gained respect to the WWE Universe. And then he thanked the fans and says without them he couldn't, wouldn't even be in the WWE. And then he was yep. cut off by Axelmania, Curtis Axel. Yes, and, sir. And uh, says that don't change the channel because Axelmania is running wild. And he talked about not liking guys that try to be somewhere else, someone else. Ironically, you know, <laughs> Axel's trying to be someone else. And then Sandow mocked Axel, repeating everything that he said for a long time. It was funny. That, that was really funny. Yeah, and then he asked uh, Sandow to get out of his ring, Axel did, after so long. And Axel tried to attack Sandow. Sandow just took over and laid out Axel and uh, ran him out of the ring. So, did he try to give him, like, some kind of people's elbow or something, I seen, something like that? I don't know. That was the, uh, well, he, he did the whole Kogan, Elbow of uh, disdain. Yeah, yeah, elbow of disdain, that's right. Did he give it to him? He did, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. That, that, he basically set up the Hulk Hogan big leg drop and then faked us out into the elbow of disdain. That was great. So he yes. is no longer going to be the intellectual savior of the masses. No, nah, and hey, he got a new theme music as well. I didn't see the theme music either, so yeah, I didn't notice that. I most certainly did. All uh, uh, That should be an indication of something, that they've got something going for the guy. I think the guy could have stepped in and took on uh, Bad News Barrett instead of Daniel Bryan. That would have been a excellent match. But they tossed in Neville instead, so I don't know. Maybe they wanted to capitalize getting Neville a big pay-per-view win. For sure. I do see good things in the future for Sandow. And I, do I don't see him on that list of being fired anymore, kind of like Fandango and Adam Rose. And I could see them getting featured endeavored. But Oh, most definitely. But I don't see that for Sandow now. Axelmania? I don't see much in the future for him. No, I'm sorry there, McGillicuddy, but you're probably uh, on your way out. And that really, of all the it's third sad, generation though, because guys, he's pretty good. And, uh, I mean, I-, I was such a big fan of his father, and uh, it's it really is kind of disappointing to I see didn't, I didn't. Him. I always rooted for him to be pretty good, you know, because it was Joe Hennick, you know. I, did, I was a big Mr. Perfect fan. I didn't want to yeah. see him end up the way he is, but he just became jobber now. Yep, unfortunately so. Maybe hey, uh, maybe he can turn it turn it around eventually. Who knows? I don't know. I hope so. Yeah, because I I do like I don't wish anybody to be fired or anything. I don't want to see Fandango or Adam Rose lose their job, but it's just you know and it's inevitable. You're in the entertainment business. If you're not being entertaining, they're gonna tell you to go. Sink or swim. That's right. the way it goes. Um, then they uh, announced the tag rematch after that for Thursday on SmackDown. Did you see that? So we are getting our rematch Thursday. There we go. So I noted that down, but they didn't have it on Raw. So I don't know. Maybe they're trying to hype up SmackDown more with that. Yeah. They did move to Thursday, so. It's about time. And they're moving back to the USA Network, which is good. That's uh, one of the best moves they've made in a long time. Right. 
Um, after that, uh, they had the Wyatt promo backstage. He talked yep. about Ryback ever realizing who he really is. He said he doesn't know himself, but he does. And he says that he's transparent, among other things. He said he knows what drives him and he knows what scares him. And he said that after tonight, he needs to open his eyes and run, he said. So, I thought that was cool. I did, too. I like that little run deal that he does at the end. Oh, yeah. He's, he's pretty, uh... He's pretty wild. So it was a pretty creepy little promo, but, you know, talking more about Ryback. Um, do you, I don't know why they had this afterwards. I could have seen this before. Yeah. And I, mean, I think they ran it in the wrong spot, in my opinion. Like, that could have been before the attack. I don't know, kind of telling him to watch out. But he did mention that, you know, after tonight he needs to open his eyes and stuff like that. So I would imagine we're going to see Bray Wyatt uh, attacking Ryback at every corner then. I do too. I, that, you know, like Jeff said, that could be a pretty good match, a hard-hitting match. It's definitely going to be a, uh, a really, like, a crossroads almost for Ryback. I don't see Bray Wyatt. It would not push Wyatt. It would only help Ryback with a win. I agree. So, I think Ryback would go over in this match. I would have to guess so. Just and to kind of look like, if he could beat Wyatt, it would really gain some uh, traction. Definitely. I think that would put him a little bit, one step closer to the main event spot he was kind of thrown into previously. Oh, and then the one he got robbed out of whenever they turned him heel that yep. first run that was terrible. But that's that's a long story for another day. But yeah, they really killed his momentum, and now they got him back up there again. So yeah. if they kill it now, it's just Ryback's done. Yeah. This is his last shot, last time. Very uh, much. They're so. not gonna they're not gonna push him again to fail, and then try to push him again. I mean, it's just not gonna happen. They're only gonna sink so much money they can't, into one they person. Can't, they can't uh, heal him out again either. No, or he's done. Yep, not after that promo that he cut where uh, he actually made me kind of like him. Yeah, he, he ain't, you know, he is the big steroid guy like CM Punk says, but, you know, I don't know. The guy does have pretty good matches if he wants to. He's not bad for a big guy. Right. The big guy. The big guy. Okay, so anyway, moving on from that, uh, they did talk the Jericho podcast with Stephanie. I'm looking forward to that after SmackDown Thursday. I am as well. I will be tuning in. Um, they showed the montage of Tough Enough tapes that have been sent in so far. Plug it yes. Tough Enough. And yes. Sh- shout out to my boy, Mitch Mitchell. He is an independent wrestler in Florida. He has a Tough Enough audition video. Go out there and search him with that hashtag, Tough Enough Mitch Mitchell. Give him a like, shout out. Hopefully he's uh, one of the guys that makes it. I definitely will, and maybe even I'll tag him on there. I'll put him on this video at the um, something we talk about. <laughs> Most certainly. Just so people will look at it and be like, okay. Most certainly. Um. So, yeah, Mitch Mitchell, I hope you do make it on there, man. I hope so. That would be cool to have somebody to pull for on there. Oh, absolutely, man. That's uh, that's how I feel about it. And Mitch certainly, uh, he's, he's young in the business, but he has – all the talents that somebody would need to make it in the WWE, I believe. What's he wrestle as? Mitch Mitchell? Mitch Mitchell. Okay. So is that Nick Fame or that's a different uh, No, uh, he actually wrestles uh, with, uh, you know, in the same area there in Florida as Nick Fame, uh, another friend of mine. And uh, Mitch actually trained with uh, Nasty Boy Brian Knobs. Right. And uh, Nick Fame also is tag team partners with uh, Jesse Sorensen. Yeah, yeah, Jesse Sorensen, yeah, from TNA. Uh, Jesse's a little bit less active on the independent circuit these days, but he is uh, he's still still makes a shot every here and there. Uh, the same thing with Nick, but uh, definitely look out for Mitch there. How come Nick hasn't ever hit TNA? Uh, you know, I believe there may have been talks at one point for him to possibly come in there. but uh, If I look I, him up on YouTube, I'll find stuff of him. It, absolutely, man. Yeah, okay, Nick so Fame. Everybody look like, up Nick Fame. Can you find stuff on Mitch Mitchell, too? Yeah, you can find matches from all those guys, so man, Nick on YouTube. Nick Fame, Mitch Mitchell. I'm going to put on the video that we talk about them so people can For sure, man. Those I'm, I'm sure they will be most appreciative. Mitch, Shout out to Mitch, those guys. Mitch Mitchell, so it's the way I think it's spelled. And then Nick Fame, F-A-M-E, yep. right? Correct. And N-I-C-K? Yep, that's okay, right. I just wanted to make sure. So, yeah, guys, everybody go help Mitch get on the show. I mean, are they going to go off like who gets the most views? Or I would venture to guess that they're gonna. It's going to go off whoever gets the most views, likes, thumbs up. And and I'm claiming here, like, have you seen him on TV? Have you seen any of his clips get shot up there? I haven't yet. I was definitely looking for. But him. did you notice that a lot of the guys that are shot up there? There was an MMA guy. There was a war guy. I I would not. I would not doubt to see those guys on the show. 
I wouldn't either. I mean, if if they're already being shown there, then right. there's a pretty good chance. And that's why I wished your boy was on there. So hopefully, we'll see. He, yeah. I know, I know that the last time I checked, he had something to the tune of like twenty thousand views. So I hope next week we might get a shot of him. And if he does, please let me know. I will absolutely. And let him know that uh, yeah, we're uh, pulling for him here on the show. So to most get him certainly, on, I'll definitely maybe put a link up to his video so people can vote for him or whatever. Like his right video, on. check it out. Let's do it. Check it out, guys. Yeah, if you can get that video link to me, I'll definitely put it under the link. For sure, man. I will send it right on over to you. Okay. Well, uh, that's cool. Um, after that, we had Neville, Luke Harper, first round match, King of the Ring. They actually announced Neville as the new sensation. Yes, uh, which was... that's pretty much uh, a big spoiler alert there. I mean, there it's pretty clear that Neville is going to get a fairly good push here right and i'm glad too with this size and stuff i was wondering yeah so he definitely has the athletic prowess to make it happen right neville wins with the red arrow by the way on that match against luke harper i was surprised to see harper go down to neville i mean two wins in a row for neville that was great so, and i gotta say that no matter how many times i see the red arrow it is always equally as impressive it's amazing but he pulls it off with ease Oh, yeah. Like I said, he'll never get injured on that move, no matter what anybody thinks, because he could pull it off at his sleep, I think. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure that he's done it enough times to where there's no way he's going to miss the it. The guy's so strong and athletic, it's just unreal. Yep. I mean, I don't see him ever getting hurt from that style. He's one of these enigmas. I certainly hope he doesn't. And I'm glad they haven't pushed his style back either since he got it. I was worried about that. Yeah, they, they might kind of get him to t tone it down just a little He's bit. He's going to have to against some of these guys, though. Yeah, he will. He will have to slow down his pace. Like I said, it did. I bet that was a complaint backstage that it kind of looked a little awkward with Barrett on some of those spots. Yeah, it did. Uh, it kind of set Barrett back a few steps on a couple of them spots, I think. Yeah, Made he was kind of having to react quickly. Right, and he was slow on the reactions. Yep. I, could, I just could tell that. You know, after so much wrestling, you can tell stuff's going on in there. You can definitely tell when there's a little bit of awkwardness. Right. Um, I just sensed that a little bit from him. And I think it's yeah. going to be, I said that from the get-go, that it's going to be problems with his style against bigger guys. Like, how can he face Big Show? I mean, that's, I guess he's just going to have to do those flips and flip into a clothesline with Big Show standing there. I mean, that's... That's a matchup I haven't even thought of yet, but that's one that I'm looking forward to now but, that you mention it. But if you get to that point, how's he going to work Big Show with that style? It's just going to be so weird. It's going to be like a uh, a lion chasing after a mouse. I guess we'll have to go back and look up Mysterio versus Kevin Nash. I mean, there you go. It's going to be another man. They could really, you know, take that and use it for Neville having him beat Big Show. Boy, yep. remember how big that was for Mysterio? That was huge. I mean, that huge. made it look like he could defeat bigger guys. That was that was what made him the giant killer. But actually, after beating Bad News Barrett and Harper. You can't get any bigger than that, so right. That's pretty. That's pretty big. Uh, big start. And let's for a just guy go who's... ahead. Let's just go ahead and uh, talk about the rest of the King of the Ring. I didn't see it. Can you go ahead get ahead and give us a rundown on what happened? Yeah, we had in the. Uh, of course, we had all the first round matches on Raw. Right, and then they uh, had on the network at six p.m. Central, which is my time. I don't know what it was yours, but they had all the uh, semifinals and the finals tonight, which I didn't right. get to watch because I was at work. I do plan on watching them. Uh, it's definitely worth watching. We had, uh, of course, our truth taking on Sheamus which in the I first could, round, which I could almost call this. Or excuse me, uh, was it our truth? No, no, was it was our uh, truth and Barrett. Barrett. Yeah, our truth and bad news Barrett. Bad news Barrett gets the win. Uh, no surprise here. Like we said, our truth was kind of the the marked guy who was going to job out in the second round. Exactly. Bad news advances to the finals, and then we have Sheamus versus Neville, which was a great match, I thought. It was fairly quick, as this was only a one-hour broadcast on the network live. Uh, Neville advances uh, after a little bit of Dolph Ziggler uh, distraction there, of course, to go to the finals. Neville versus Bad News Barrett 2, a yeah. rematch from the like Extreme you. Rules, was equally as good. As the match at Extreme Rules. No commercial break? No commercial break. Okay, that's good. And uh, as as mentioned, uh, Bad News Barrett did pick up the victory. Neville returned the favor. I was, I had, I would have bet all my money 
that Neville was going to win this, and I'm kind of glad that he didn't uh, because that would kind of just be the easy way of just strapping a rocket to his ass and sending him straight to the top. I like the fact that they're building up this Bad News Barrett, uh, Adrian Neville, Neville rivalry. You know what I hate, though? Just to mention Barrett. Why did he drop the Bad News gimmick? You know, I don't know. There's no more bad news for from Barrett. No, I haven't heard him say it. He's just bad news Barrett now. It's it's really got nothing to do with anything. It's a good thing bad news Brown isn't alive because uh, that'd be Barrett, gimmick infringement, and he would have heard about it. Uh, he would have kicked his ass, and anybody else who opposed uh, there, Mister Brown, would have. If you've never uh, listened to bad news Allen, bad news Brown, man, his shoot interview was classic. Oh yeah, Re- rest oh, in he- peace. Absolutely. One, one hell of a legit shooter from the history of the business. And uh, that's no knock on Wade Barrett. That guy's got a little bit of a shooting background as well. Right. So, after that, uh, do we have anything else to say about the King of the Ring other than Barrett winning? Uh, not try- really. It would have been better if he would have got the Intercontinental title back for the 27th time. Right. But uh, that's one recommendation. I always try to recommend something from the network. But go back and watch the finish of the King of the Ring. Definitely. So that's my recommendation this week. Um, actually, the main event was Reigns, Orton, and Rollins and Kane. Yep. Um, I did like the big slow suck sign in the crowd because I know I've <laughs> said that on the show before. Yeah. <laughs> I called it big slow. Yes, absolutely. So I do like shout out to whoever sign that was. That was pretty good. I don't know if you caught that, but. I did. Or- Orton hit an RKO on Rollins for the win after Kane hit Rollins outside. Or yeah, Kane hit Rollins outside with that uppercut after he laid out J and J security too, and he sent him right into the ring waiting for Orton. Yep. And then uh, Kane announced the poll results as seventy eight percent of the vote going to the triple threat match. So Rollins is in shock after this, and he turns and gets speared by Reigns. And then they end the show with Reigns up celebrating on the ropes and uh, Orton looking on from the ramp. So. Yep. I'm looking forward to this triple threat match. I am too. Um, I did like the ending of Raw for that matter because they had a they had a reason to watch the entire show. Yeah, all the way to the end. That's always uh, it's always something good whenever they can give you that little cliffhanger to keep you going all three hours. It's not always easy. Okay, so overall, I thought Raw was pretty decent this week. It was good. Uh, it was pretty good. They I thought they did a good job of setting up a few of the matches for Payback officially. And unofficially. And having the King of the Ring on there was a, like a breath of fresh air. That was a nice little surprise. Right. Oh, yeah, I did forget to mention that they did announce on the main event that they were going to have the Jerry Springer too hot for TV after all. Yes, and, and I, I did, did check. I, I checked it out, and I was like, t- I was done instantly when I found out what it was. Let me guess. It was just a bunch of stupid segments with no actual crazy Jerry sent uh, no. Jerry Springer uncensored it's stuff. It's just Jerry giving you a rundown on things that have happened in the past like uh, you know May Young having the hand and stuff like that. Uh, I was just like I was completely turned off as soon as I found out what it was. So maybe you feel the same, maybe you don't. But. Yeah, I mean they're not going to get me to tune in with that or the Corey Graves show culture shock neither one of those i am, really I am in, i'm a big fan of marvel comics though and i do think that's kind of neat yeah yeah but, that was but definitely for wrestling cool. fans i don't see a whole lot of crossover appeal there necessarily i don't know i am a big marvel fan and a big wrestling fan so maybe there is i mean cm punk yeah. is a marvel fan you that's know it's true there are a lot of wrestling fans that you know wrestling is almost like real life superheroes that's a great. That's a pretty valid point you got there. Uh, my yeah, dad, man, my man. dad used to say that all the time when I was a kid. They're like real life superheroes. Yep. Come that's to a, life. Uh, that's a great point. Maybe we will. Uh, Especially when they were jacked up and everything, you know. Oh yeah, back in the eighties, right. Ultimate Warrior was a walking comic book. Exactly. So maybe that's why they're trying to cross it over. Maybe they think there's some kind of a connection they want to hit on. Yeah. And I could see them being at Comic Con and stuff too now. Well, they've had a, a somewhat of a presence there in recent years. Didn't they have a WWE comic book not too long ago written or something? I think so. They've had some in the past that were pretty rotten. Do you remember the Warrior comic book? Oh, yeah, back in 96. Didn't I they have a him. WCW comic book at once, I remember getting. Yeah, that was by Marvel back in the day. The that WCW was, uh, one? Yeah, that was a Marvel comic book it around was like, uh, It was like a bash at the beach, the storyline was. I can't yeah. remember it all. But I, all I remember is the first uh, the first issue was a battle royal match, like at the Bash at the Beach or something, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that issue. I had that. 
I think it was the only one I ever got because I yeah. didn't ever find another one. Yeah, they, they were they were pretty short lived. Right. So I wish I still had that. They're definitely out there on eBay. Yeah, I bet they're not too much. No. Okay, going on to news and notes, and then uh, that'll be it with uh, episode twenty four. All right. Um, I do want to start off the news and notes though. And I have a 10-second moment of silence here for the passing of one of the great legends in wrestling history, the uh, founder of AWA and the 10-time AWA champion. He actually went on to train Iron Sheik. Uh, I have some of the guys written down here. Uh, Iron Sheik, Rick Rick Flair, Flair, Dick Dick the Bruiser, Steamboat, Kurt Hennig, Bob Backlund, Blackjack Uh, Mulligan, Ole Anderson. uh, uh, Pretty much a who's who. Yeah, he trained a lot of guys and was a superstar in the ring and out of the ring. And the famed AWA, he did found he did uh, die at 89 years old. Was it last night? I believe, yeah, it was uh, either Gagne. early Monday. Yeah, um, so I want to pay tribute to Vern Gagne. Do you have anything to say on Gagne? I do remember the AWA for a little bit when I was younger. Um, I caught him at the end of their run on ESPN there. Yeah, uh, Vern Gagne was really important in wrestling history, not only as being the founder of the AWA and his long list of trainees, uh, but really his his biggest contribution was around the dawn of television. Uh, He was one of the big stars of wrestling at the time, and he was one of the guys who contributed to making pro wrestling on television as big as it is. Uh, Definitely a worthy 10-second moment of silence. Uh, May Vern Gagne rest in peace. Rest in peace there to Vern. Uh, Sad to see him pass. But as I was going to say, too, uh, he had the spectacular legacy of AWA DVD that they did for WWE. I actually own it, and it talks about a lot of the stuff that you just talked about. And it's actually on the network, the uh, documentary part. So go on the network and check that out, too, if you're curious about Vern Gagne, and you will find out quickly who he is. He actually was responsible for um, Boost and Hawkamania. He was, most definitely. He Uh, was the guy that... That booked Hulk Hogan coming off of that big Rocky Three appearance, and really made Hul- uh, Hulkamania what it is that it eventually became in the uh, World Wrestling Federation. People don't realize that Hulkamania was already running wild before he hit WWF. Most definitely, he had a great match with uh, the AWA champion Nick Bockwinkle. Right. Uh, actually, Vern had a lot of great matches with Bockwinkle. Yeah, tons of. If you don't, tons. I mean, this guy had a great in-ring talent. I mean, he was a, he was an amateur champion, I think, as well. Yep. Uh, he was a, a former Green Bay Packer as well. I mean, jumping Jim Brunzel trained there. I mean, some of the great wrestlers in history yep. that were actual shooters, like Iron Sheik. I mean, trained under this guy and have utmost respect to this day for him. That's right. Uh, he was uh, he was also a alternate at the forty eight Olympics. That's cool. So yeah, uh, well deserved ten second uh, tribute for him. And uh, this episode is dedicated to him. Thoughts and prayers to his family. If you have nothing else to say, we'll get on from that. Rest in peace, Vern. Rest in peace, Vern. Thoughts and prayers to the Gagne family. Right on. Okay, so some of the news and notes we have on other than that. We had uh, Samoa Joe reported backstage at the NXT tapings meeting with Triple H about a contract. Did you hear about that? I had heard some rumblings about Samoa Joe possibly coming to WWE. Of course, he's not with TNA anymore. I would love to see it. As I mentioned in the the, the uh, Jay Uso injury video on Chrono Cord, Jay uh, Jay Uso or rather Jimmy Uso tagging up with Joe Uso. I mean, it sounds natural enough, right? Yeah, and I did report that last week, and maybe we could see that in the works. Who knows? Yeah, those uh, those Samoan guys all that that's kind of their gimmick is that they're all brothers, anyways. So. Yeah, so they, he should be like a cousin of the Usos. Exactly, that'll work. You might not have to use Uso as his last name, I guess. Maybe not. They could just call him Joe. Yeah, just Cousin Joe. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so he did meet with Triple H about a contract, though. So it will be I interesting hope... to see him pop up on the NXT tapings or something soon. That would be fantastic. Uh, even if he's not in an in-ring role, Joe is a guy who could train the younger guys. I, I think he deserves an in-ring shot, though. I agree. Especially with the return of Rhino, you know. Oh, yeah, that would be a fantastic matchup. And what about Brian? I guess, I guess the Brian Kendrick. Uh, he, he only had like a one-time shot there. Mm-hmm. So I haven't seen him back since, but I have seen Rhino on there for a while. 
Yeah, it's always good to see him goring people right out of their shoes. And uh, NXT news, by the way, Jason Albert is now the head NXT trainer after Bill DeMott. He has been since Bill DeMott resigned. Uh, anything on that? They said yeah. actually he has uh, all positive reviews. Yeah, I feel like that's a guy. That's a guy. Uh, of course, Jason Albert, A Train, Prince Albert, Giant Bernard, Tensai, whatever you know him by. He's a guy who uh, he's an over ten year pro. He was a great success in Japan after his WWE career uh, in ring, and of course he came back a few years ago as Tensai. He's a guy. He's one of those guys who never really made it to the top in America, but he has a ton of great experience to off, to offer these young guys. And uh, kudos to him for getting a, a position that he certainly is well deserved. Um, has he still been doing the commentating on there for now? I think he he's gonna have to transition off of there. I the last episode of NXT I watched, he was still commentating, but I'm not sure if they're gonna keep him there or not. I don't know. I'd be that'll be interesting to see if he's gonna handle both duties or. Yeah. Who'd they replace uh, the other guy with? Alex Riley. Oh, um, one of their, their I don't even know his name, announcer guys. Okay. <laughs> I, I just didn't re- realize who they, I didn't even pay attention to that. I know that, uh, that Corey Graves is, of course, you know, since he had the concussion issue, he's, he's uh, still joined the announce team. I'm glad to see that, too. Corey Graves would have been a great talent if not yeah. for that. Yeah. Um, other things about NXT, Jim Ross was also backstage. They said he was doing voiceover work for an upcoming project. So. That's, uh, it's always good to see good old JR involved with pro wrestling in any capacity. I'm glad because uh, he was out of the uh, WWE ring there for a little bit, so it looks like he's back in. Yeah, that's good. It's, it's always good to see him welcome back into the fold. Okay. Uh, anything else on him? Uh, just to catch up on something old, I, his performance at Wrestle Kingdom 9, New Japan, was one of my favorite commentary performances of all time. I've never even watched that. I've heard a lot about it, and uh, I would definitely go back now and try to catch some of his work. I love good old JR. For sure. Um, I do want to go back and check that out, though, now that you said that, so everybody check that out. If it's Worth watching. Good. Okay, cool. L- little bonus recommendation for this week. Cool. I love his podcast, by the way, too. I, I, yeah, I'm also a, a loyal listener to JR's podcast. Go check that out as well, guys. Right on. Um, we had the uh, rumor that Nash said that Taker was close to jumping to WCW in the Attitude Era and says that actually is why he switched to the biker gimmick because he was going to come as Mark Calloway the biker, not the dead man. Well, he, of course, would not be able to have used the Undertaker gimmick, um, but I would have to, I mean... At that point, WCW was kind of on its way down. I do know yeah, that the Undertaker... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is this true? Because Taker was... He was in the outs with Vince at the time, and he did not wrestle at 2000 uh, WrestleMania. That's right. Uh, however, he was also nursing a lot of injuries at the time. I believe he had a torn pec muscle. Um, so what... I would, uh, if I had to guess, this was probably Nash just trying to take care of his boy... And half of it also being that Undertaker could say to Vince, well, I got an offer from down south for a lot of money. Yeah. he was, And just, then you use that as leverage. I think he was quoted as saying he was just trying to get the boys paid as much as they could back then. And Exactly. It is the reason that he switched to the biker gimmick, he says, too. So that's interesting. It is a pretty interesting fact looking back there. Yeah. Um, I always wondered that why that switch took place. Yeah, it was different. I mean, he left. Uh, he was the ministry taker, and he comes back and the on the motorcycle, and he's totally the American guy. badass. Yeah, it was cool, but at the time he needed to change. He did, but it didn't last. It, it, it got so boring quick, though, that he needed to change back. So we Definitely. all see what happens. He could never go back to that, in my opinion. It would be hard to. A uh, couple things on um, TNA. Uh, Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins joins the TNA creative team. Are they digging deep or what, man? Well, that's, you know, I do know Billy is a big wrestling fan. There's no denying he's a very creative person. I think he has worked with TNA already. I believe he has, yes. Uh, He actually made an appearance with ECW during their uh, dying days, as well as having some experience uh, running Resistance Pro on the indies. So uh, it, it can't hurt with TNA. Well, Michael Wilbon on Pardon the Interruption had a uh, comment about it. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, they actually ran it down, and uh, he brought up the signing with TNA, whoever that is, he says. Oof. And then he said that the Smashing Pumpkins aren't actually selling arenas out anymore, and they have no gigs, so he needs to work somewhere. Uh, last time I checked, the Smashing Pumpkins aren't selling out any arenas, but, I mean, hey, the guy's making a living. Can't knock that. Michael best Wilbon. Of, best of luck to TNA. Michael Wilbon acting like TNA. Who are they? Yeah. That's well, after how many years now? 13 years? I mean, they've been around for quite some time. I mean, despite all of the mismanagement and criticisms that exist, power shifts. It's never good to see somebody out of work. So, I mean, it, no, it's not. It, good, good for TNA. Hopefully, this is something that can turn it around for them and good for Billy Corgan. Yeah. And also, China, um, she talked about working with TNA and she said she could, she would again if she could on Twitter. And uh, she actually debuted with TNA in 2011. Yeah, and actually, see. actually, Angle tweeted back that she he missed her. So could you see China coming back to work with TNA? Maybe they feel sorry for her since the WWE deal. That, not to rag on TNA, that seems like a very TNA thing to do. Uh, putting somebody who has problems in the spotlight like she does. Uh, needless to say, they have a track record of doing so with Jeff Hardy. Um. I, uh, I want to see China get help and be healthy as a person, uh, whatever her problems are. Well, maybe this could get her back in the wrestling loop. That that would be good, and I think that might help, but then again, it could exacerbate the problem. Never really know. Best of luck to her, though. I mean, China. Uh, she's almost not worth talking about, but, you know. But, hey, I mean, good on, good on Kurt Angle for not giving up on her and for being supportive. And I almost forgot about her 2011 TNA thing. Yeah, she came as the surprise partner, I believe, of, was it Mick Foley or was it Kurt Angle? I'm thinking it was Angle. Yeah, I think so. Because that's who said, I miss you, so. There we go. Um, that was my TNA news. Um, actually, a couple of UFC things that I wanted to get on. Dana right. White says that Ronda Rousey working with WWE was a one-time shot. So what do you think of that? Do you think Rousey will be back with the WWE or do you think it was a one-time shot? I think as long as she's under contract to UFC, she's going to stay where her bread is buttered. However, if the money is right and Vince McMahon wants to do the right cross-promotional type deal to get Ronda Rousey in there, possibly with a match against Stephanie, uh, maybe in a tag with The Rock, uh, we, we could see that. There's certainly a lot of money in that. but So you don't see Dana's comments making any impact on what happens at Mania next year? I think Dana White's a pretty reasonable guy, and if you wave enough money in his face and it's mutually beneficial enough for all parties, he's going to be all in. So, Dana's saying it's a one-time shot, though, to try to shoot down any rumors. So, I guess you don't want everybody talking about her going to be working with another company while she's in one. I don't know. Yeah, uh, that could be, but, I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's more exposure for UFC and it's more exposure for WWE. You get more of the... The crossover appeal between MMA and wrestling fans. Right on. Exactly. I think they should cross over more. Absolutely. Also, uh, GSP, George St. Pierre, he talked about uh, appearing in WWE as something that he's always wanted to do in a press conference. And he said that, he would love to make an appearance. That would be great for GSP. I mean, he's getting up there in age. He's certainly still physically talented enough to do uh, anything in the ring. I mean, we saw Ken Shamrock make a great transition between UFC and that. And he's back. young enough still, I think, too. I mean, how old is he? 38, 37, maybe? Somewhere thereabouts. And there's a lot of appeal in someone who is French-speaking. And legit. And legit. He's a legit athlete, legit shooter. And, you know, uh, you, you got another Canadian, uh, a French-Canadian there. GSP's always uh, been popular with the, with the folks up in the Great White North. And uh, that's mutually beneficial, it seems like, if he does decide to go there. That's awesome. I'd like to see it. I would as well. I'm not the hugest GSP fan, but I would like to see him in the ring. Definitely. Um, so even if it is like a one-time appearance, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, I wanted to get that UFC stuff in there. Usually Jeff Crow gets all that in for me, so a nod to him tonight. I did get it in, Jeff, if you're listening. I know he will be. 
anyway, on from the UFC news, uh, we had Austin shoot down the uh, rumors about uh, Vince and him being at odds. He says that there were trademark issues he talked to a lawyer about. Um, he said they needed to protect him, and he said that they did, and he has no hard feelings about it. And he said there's great things to come from him in WWE, so stay tuned. Yeah, I think that was just a little issue with Austin having the store with pro wrestling tees. Right. Um, I think maybe with the 316 or something like that. Uh -huh. Good to see it worked out, and it's always good to hear that the door is open for Austin to show up at WrestleMania in Houston. And we'll keep everybody. It seems like a continuing story on Austin every week. He keeps making the headlines, so. Yeah. We'll see what happens from there. I, I hope he does come back in some capacity. I mean, really. They could even, use if, even if it's not for a match, bring them back. Right, they could use them. So um, after that, we have uh, Heyman and Lesnar being speculated to return in July, and they're supposed to start a feud with Rollins, so I don't see Rollins losing the belt anytime soon. I don't see him losing the belt either, at least not until, like you said, July, August, You know, usually around SummerSlam. Were you already predicting that, or...? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I, I definitely see just as a general trend that the the person from Wrestle who gains the title coming out of WrestleMania usually holds on to it till around mm, SummerSlam, Survivor Series. Uh, we haven't seen many really lengthy reigns with the title other than CM Punk and Brock Lesnar. Right. So um, I see. Brock, I think I see Brock getting the belt back when he comes back. I do too, and I see him being the biggest baby face in the entire company. Even with Heyman. Even with Heyman. Yeah, won't hurt him a bit. Nope. So, anything else on that? Uh, I love Paul Heyman. It's, I love um, Lesnar too. I, I'm a huge fan of Brock Lesnar. I'm starving for some more Paul Heyman promos on my TV. Yeah, I think they should really pair him up with somebody again while uh, Lesnar's gone like they did with Cesaro. Absolutely. They could have built a good feud out of that, but they never did. So Nothing ever became of it. Just unexplained that he wasn't a Heyman guy one night. Yeah. So after that, we had uh, Ambrose. Um, actually hadn't won a single pay-per-view match since September 2013. The 15th of September in 2013. He's never won a singles match since defending the U.S. title then. That's... Uh... Almost two years, or... Uh, he's he's managed to stay popular despite that. It's a crazy fact that I wanted to get in there. Yeah, and I gotta say, you know, having Renee Young to himself isn't too bad of a consolation prize. No, he's got it made with that. So uh, he does need to get serious about moving up in the card, though. I think. I think so. I mean, we've seen Reigns and Rollins, of course. Yeah, it's about time that he makes an argument that he should be in the main event picture. Did you hear the pop he got? He always gets great pops. Ash, in Chicago. Always. He got a huge pop at Extreme Rules. Oh, yeah. So, that was just an interesting note. Um, actually, May 4th Raw will be WWE Pat Patterson Appreciation Night. So, look forward to right. that next week. Good times. Way. It's in Canada, which is always uh -huh. a good, it's always a good uh, venue for Raw. Absolutely. And uh, it's always good to see Pat Patterson. The guy is a legend in the business. Right on. Um, ESPN E60 WWE Behind the Curtain is airing May 5th. Uh, Tuesday, May 5th, which is going to be an interesting watch for any wrestling fan. I hear it's a really good documentary that they shot, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. I am as well. 30 for 30 does some fantastic stuff. They did that piece on the Von Erich family, which was really good. I haven't watched and that. I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing this next one. Yeah, this is, this is going to be E60, though, so. Ah. Have you seen those? Those are good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Behind the Curtain. Um, actually, Xavier Woods was on the front of the uh, ad. That That's I, a nice little push for him. Yeah. And then the last note that I had was something from Raw that I forgot to mention. Booker T apologizing for the comments that he made during Neville's match. And I just wanted to note that Booker said Neville may be the first high-flying king. And then JBL said Owen Hart was a high flyer, but not like Neville. And then Booker, C Booker T said Owen didn't defy gravity like Neville. So, that was uh, a very poor, very poor coincidental choice of words. It really was, but I, I don't think he was thinking at the time. He did. There's no way. He man. did but, say he never meant he would never offend the ability of Owen Hart or what happened to him. He says he never meant to offend anyone, and if he did, he apologized. Yeah. So at least he came right out and known that he'd said something that could have been took, you know. Because at, at first I read it and I'm like, what? Why were they? Okay, now I see why they're mad. Yeah. 
Because it's um, true, but then what happened to him? It could have been like a dig at that. Yeah, if it's taken wrong, you know, as I say, it was just a very unfortunate coincidence of choice of so, words. Neville does not defy gravity like Owen. Oof. Okay, so any more news other than that? So Booker T apologizes, guys. How about that? Uh, now if he'll just apologize for calling Hulk Hogan the N-word. <laughs> we'll never forget that. Never forget it. Oh, boy. So, that's all I have, man. We've went a long yeah. time, but you know what? Like we said, it was going to be an hour or two Broadway with us on the mic. That's uh, right, the Iron Man match. Yeah, we don't know when we'll get C-Dub back, so we had to get everything in there. We had a lot to cover. Could be one of our longest shows ever. Uh, hey, super size for the big guy here. Yeah, but hopefully double promotion here. Chronicord Pro Wrestling, C-Dub. Yep. From the Chronicord Pro Wrestling show. That's right, guys. Um, hopefully we, I can get on one of their shows soon. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a must in the future. We're definitely going to bring you on, Yeah, ho- hopefully, dude, that uh, anytime I need somebody on here that I can just call you up and be like, hey, man, you want to do the hey, show? Hey, man, call me in. I'm always down to be the mystery tag team partner. Yeah, so. All you got to do is tag me in. So hopefully uh, I can tag C-Dub in down the road here. If I don't have anybody on here with me because I hate doing them solo. I have done it, but I don't like to. Right but uh, I want to tell everybody to uh, make sure they subscribe on YouTube and like us on Facebook if you find us there. Also, like Chronicord on uh, YouTube. And where else can they find you on Facebook? Yeah, you guys can find us on Facebook, Chronocord. You can find us at our website, chronocord.com. That's C H R O N O C H O R D. You can find us at SoundCloud. And you can find us on Twitter at Chronocord. And, of course, right here on YouTube on our channel, we got pro wrestling, video games, music, and so much more. Jeff, my man, this has been a super-sized Brawl for All. Yes, it has. It's an unforgettable episode. Absolutely. Hopefully this is just the beginning of a lengthy and mutually beneficial partnership here for both Chrono Cord and Brawl for All. Oh, yeah, it will be. And everybody, make sure you go support Chrono Cord too, and uh, kind of as a thank you for just getting on here, period, and finding us. I want people to go check him out for sure. And I already have, and he has some great content over there. Him and his friend. Who's your friend there that helps you? JC is my partner there in Chrono Cord. He's uh, not really up on the current wrestling stuff. He's more of a classic fan. He'll definitely be jumping in there on some of the wrestling stuff. Well, but... I want to shout out to him if he listens to this, too. So Absolutely. Thank and you so thank, much, thanks guys. Thanks for the support from him, too. Uh, yeah, we will be posting your links to your channels up under our video. And uh, we will be posting those links for Mitch Mitchell. Most on definitely. YouTube, and uh, also for Nick Fame, anything you got on him, I'll post. So uh, Right on. Yeah, uh, C-Dub. Thanks a lot for getting on this week, and that'll be episode 24. We'll be back with episode 25 next week. So, everybody make sure you tune in next week. I want to say peace out, C-Dub. Until next time, thanks a lot. Hey, thanks so much, Jeff. It's been a pleasure. I hope to catch you guys here on the Brawl for All sometime soon. Catch you all down the road. Yep. Sorry for the lengthy episode, too, guys, but you know what? Sometimes it's just the way it is. Sorry, not sorry. (laughs) Well, peace out, guys. Thanks a lot. Peace.